ஹாய் கைஸ் வெல்கம் பேக் டு இனிசெட் ரீகால் டூ தௌசண்ட் டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபோர் வீடியோ வி ஆர் கோனா டூ டென் கொஷன்ஸ் ஆஃப் இனிசெட் ஸோ லெட்ஸ் கெட் ஸ்டார்டட் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் தே ஆஸ்கட் அபவுட் ராங் க்ரைட்டீரியா அபவுட் சிவியர் எக்யூட் மால் நியூட்ரிஷன் த ஆப்ஷன்ஸ் கிவன் வர் ப்ரெஸ்யூமபிளி பீடல் எடிமா ஹைட் ஃபார் ஏஜ் வெயிட் ஃபார் ஹைட் அண்ட் மிட் அப்பராம் சக்கம் ஃபெரன்ஸ் so here is the criteria you can see here that weight for height less than minus 3 standard deviations visible severe wasting mid arm circumference less than 11.5 cm and pedal edema were there so according to this options i think the answer should be around height for age so we'll see what the key should be which of the following is not a criteria for responding to treatment for severe acute malnutrition so there are two questions in pediatrics regarding severe acute malnutrition this is the table describing which which criteria should be uh, present to tell you that the treatment has failed on day 4 if there is failure to regain appetite on day 4 if the ba- baby fails to start to lose edema on day 10 if the edema is still present and on day 10 if the baby fails to enter the phase 2 and gain is not more than 5 ki- 5 g per kg per day so here is what you can uh see here so yeah this is one of the question which was asked which of the following diseases are not included in carney's complex there are several disorders included in carney's complex like cardiac myxoma skin myxomas and there are some skin related conditions like lentiginosus multiple blue nevus breast ductal adenomas and testicular tumors ovarian cyst and endocrinopathies like acromegaly thyroid tumor so i think the question lied in these options there was another question regarding nada's criteria nada's criteria is used for diagnosis of congenital heart diseases we have two we have one major criteria and also one minor criteria never ever in our lives diastolic murmur is physiological so one criteria is sorted already so systolic murmur grade 3 or more diastolic murmur cyanosis and congestive heart failure are considered major whereas all the chotu chotu things like abnormal ecg abnormal chest x ray abnormal bp abnormal second heart sound and systolic murmur less than grade 3 comes under minor criteria so for diagnosis of congenital heart diseases you must have two major or one major plus two minor is the criteria having said that we must move on to fifth question so there were many ofthal questions in this inset exam what is the av ratio in retina in healthy individuals i am assuming this was the question it is 2 is to 3 which is the av ratio in retina and they also asked what is the vacutainer used for serum electrolyte estimation it is red you can see uh, you know one table given here for all the vacutainers and their uses but there is little uh, controversy here i guess uh, some people say it is red and some people say it is gold so we have to see what is the answer for it and people have said that there is one histology image which was given about rods and cones that is photo receptors labeling that particular layer of rods and cones 
so they have asked which organelle is not present in this particular layer it is endoplasmic reticulum which is absent in this layer okay i think i am clear so far there was this recently approved drug by fda uh, in 2023 known as vanoprazone even if you have no idea about this drug you would know that prazo we you know we all know that prazoles are ppis so this was one of those drug which is vanoprazon which is a ppi have a slightly different mechanism of action like it is a potassium competitive acid blocker pcap so in india it was approved around 2023 it is usually not affected by any cyp2 c19 so i think it can be used along with clopidogrel and so not like omeprazole we uh, we can use it with clopidogrel and all so there was this multiple uh, you know uses of this drug you can just see it see it here and the ninth question was how will the oxygen dissociation curve shift after blood transfusion some graph was given i guess so there was this very good explanation the patient will have a left shift of oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve so this is the complication of blood transfusion whenever you transfuse blood to the patient it is something related to 2,3 bpg so the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve is gonna shift to left after blood transfusion okay you need to warm and you need to avoid alkalosis kind of things so that the curve shouldn't shift to left okay and finally we have this ecg of pulmonary embolism which was given in the exam that you can see there is this s wave in lead 1 and there was this q wave which is pathological in this lead 3 and there is t wave inversion in this 3 in this lead 3 so this is famously known as s1 q3 and t3 pattern for a broader view i have also included this particular ecg of you know s wave in lead 1 q wave in lead 3 and inverted t waves in lead 3 you can see it here so having said this i think i am going to do the remaining questions later on please let me know in the comments whether this is helpful or not thank you so much bye bye